Today on Rambling About Cars, road trip season is upon us, and this year will hopefully be better than last year. I know that for a fact because I just got back from a 2,500-mile road trip, and we're going to talk a little bit about my road trip. We're going to talk about road trips in general because car people love road trips, but, but, but we also have some breaking technology news that we got from Ford that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. You'll definitely want to stand by for that. So automotive adventurers, it's podcast time. I'm Christopher Smith. Across the way is Chris Bruce. What all have I missed the last week while I was gone, man? Uh, so lightning is real. We we found out yes. that. Uh, so that is not just speculation anymore. Otherwise, that, that's probably the biggest thing you missed. Um, well, Ford the obviously listens. They obviously listen yeah. to rambling about cars as yep. they should. Um, of course, nobody could have foreseen that Ford would make the F-150 lightning connection with electricity. It's it's not at all coincidence. They Thunderbird has to be next, right? Like, Thunderbird's got to be next. You heard it here. And we know Ford is listening, so... That's right, yeah. We need, we need a new Thunderbird. Not, not another crossover. Not another four-door thing. We need a cool-ass electric Thunderbird. Yeah, make it like a coupe. Make it sing. Obviously have a, you know, a convertible version and a hard top. Yeah. Make it sing. You heard it here. And if you think it should happen, email us at podcast at mortarone.com. We'll e- we'll forward all of your emails to Ford. No, exactly. we won't. We we won't. But oh, if you email it, I'll send it to someone at Ford. <laughs> I don't know who. I'll just put it in a blank, blank, blank at Ford.com address and look what we got. Show. Look what we got. Yeah, we uh, could do that. Yeah. Well, we're, uh, let, let's let's talk about lightning later. Yeah. Um, because yeah, road trip. So I took off last Thursday. I worked mm-hmm. through the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, of course, we record our podcast uh, usually on Tuesdays, sometimes on Wednesdays. Um, after that, I was on the road going from Rapid City, South Dakota to northern lower Michigan to visit family. First time I'd done northern that trip. Northern lower Michigan is, is a funny way of putting it. Northern <laughs> lower Michigan. Well, they, hey. No, no. It's the lower part of the mitten. I understand. They're, it's they're, not they're UP, okay. But... So on YouTube, you can see that I everybody has their map of Michigan, right? You have the lower peninsula. <laughs> And then you have the Upper Peninsula, right? Yeah. Two hands. Um, so, I mean, if you say Upper Michigan, that's the people Upper Peninsula. People would think the UP. Yeah. Think people think um, you're going to Marquette. And if you just say Michigan, people think you're going to Detroit. Because, I mean, you think of Michigan, okay, uh, Detroit. But no, Northern Lower Michigan, um, it's where I spent the latter half of my teen years. We moved north um from southeast michigan area and my parents are still up there and it's been i mean it's it's the pandemic right it, it was over it was well over a year since i had seen any of my family things are settling down a little bit covid wise i've got my You're vaccinations yeah. they've got their vaccinations so i said time to go in for a visit right. and yeah man it was about 2500 miles round trip i've done the uh i've done the trip before it's it's a super easy drive. If you say 2,500 miles, you think uh, it sounds like kind of a lot. It's a super easy drive because I go through the upper peninsula. I don't swing down by Chicago. Um, it's shorter and it's actually quicker for me to go the Northern route. So, so you I'm, go down South on the Mackinac bridge and stuff. Oh yeah. Cool. Yep. Yep. Cross over the Big Mac. For those that don't know, I think it's still the largest suspension bridge in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, five mile, five mile span all total. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's it's a cool crossing. It's a cool bridge. Of course, uh, having spent so much time up there, I, I'm well acquainted with it. Some people get a little squirrely going over bridges. And if you're that type of person, Not the you one probably, for you because it's long. You probably don't <laughs> want to go to the Upper Peninsula through michigan you can it is not a bridge where you can see one end from the other side it is it's long yeah it's long and at its height i forget how many several hundred feet you are above the water um but only one car that i know of ever went off the bridge um in its entire history i mean it was it was completed in the 50s um and if i remember correctly Oh, it was, I mean, it was like a little Yugo or, I mean, something really small that apparently got blown off the top of the bridge. They do get some pretty gusty winds up there, but the bridge is designed the, um, the, the far right lanes in either direction. It's, it's four lanes, uh, two lanes in either direction. The far right lanes are paved, but then when you get up on the suspension portion, the left lanes, this, the, the center lanes there 
are are just graded metal so air can pass through um and yeah if you're watching on youtube we got a shot of the of the mac up there that looks like that was taken from mackinac city that actually looks i mean that's not my picture but i've taken a few uh, profile <laughs> shots of the bridge pretty much from that same spot i can just about guarantee you i know exactly where they're at there's a little park that's uh that's right near where you get on the bridge from I-75 at, and I, I bet you a gazillion dollars they're in that park because, I mean, it's the perfect place to uh, to get a good shot. And, yeah, I mean, what it's all What did you drive? Um, ha, I managed to procure a 2021 Toyota Camry SE, and I'm kind of glad I did. Um, that was a just, rental, right? It, it was Yes, it, it was a rental. Um, I, I just have two cars in my fleet, uh, my Mazda 6 and my Mustang. The Mustang... Is not a road trip car. <laughs> um, it was an all right. I've actually done this trip before in the Mustang, but that was when it only had kind of loud exhaust. Now it has really loud exhaust uh, and 373 gears. So it's not the best road trip car, but I was ready to take that. Um, my wife needed the Mazda. It was just me going solo. So she needed the Mazda here for work. And out here in Western South Dakota, I mean, people, the, the vacationers are really starting to step up. COVID is, you know, COVID kept everybody pretty well stationary last year. Well, that's happening so, everywhere, that there's kind of a rental car shortage. There if you're is. listening to this, we're May of 2021, and rental cars are in short supply because rental companies got rid of their cars during COVID. And now that they need them because of the uh, computer chip shortage, yes. they can't buy them. So... Yes, it's it's very tough for the rental industry right now. And that is doubly so in an area where you're seeing a lot of vacationers, which right. Rapid City, the Black Hills of South Dakota, we get a lot of people that fly into Rapid City. They jump in a rental car. I mean, I, I was lucky. Um, I was trying to price this out online and online. It just kept saying everything is sold out. You can't get anything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, well, let me stop by the local office just to make sure. And they said, yeah, they're, they're being really conservative online. Uh, she said, I can probably get you into something. I was like, you know, I, I pretty much I'll take anything you have and I don't need any big truck or SUV or anything. So yeah, the Camry came up. I did have to pay a little bit extra because everything is in premium, but you know what? I mean, it was worth it. Um, I've been, I've been trying to track down a fuel pressure issue on the Mustang and I, I think the Mustang would have made the trip. All right. But I would have needed to wear these headphones that I'm wearing <laughs> right now. Um, just to keep my ears from bleeding because it's quite loud. And with the 373s I put in the back, um, fifth gear on the highway, it's it's a 95 Mustang. So it's the old five liter. Last year, the old five liter. Um, on the highway, South Dakota with 80 mile an hour speed limits. I mean, I'm probably pushing like 27, 2800 RPM. Which doesn't sound like that much because but we're for used that to cars. 5 that's, for, that's for the a five lot for that engine. For the old push rod five O that red lines at about six. Yeah. That's just that's just humming along. And that's about probably if I'm lucky, like 18 miles to the gallon. The Toyota Camry, sit down for this one because <laughs> this this blew me away. On my trip wet or my trip east from South Dakota to Michigan, I averaged averaged 46 miles to the gallon and that's going 80 miles in south dakota and i think you told me what 75 that's in? that's that's running the speed limit in south dakota on i-90 which is 80 miles an hour i had had the crew set at 80 81 um when i passed into minnesota the speed limit drops to 70 i was still running between 70 and 75 uh when i got into wisconsin i was still running right around 70 75 that was the that was the the extent of my first day, I went all the way to, uh, to Marinette, Wisconsin, which is literally like a mile from the Michigan border. You cross over, uh, cross over a little river there. It's still on the Western side of Lake Erie. If you want to go to the upper peninsula folks and you're scared to death of bridges, that's how you got to do it. You're going to have to go up through Wisconsin way to do it, yeah. and, and up that way. Um, but yeah, 46 miles to the gallon. And that was an average. So you figure, I mean, I, I was, I must've been hitting 50, quite yeah. often to to maintain that average and that's now, a mid-size you know that's not a compact car it's a mid-size sedan you said it had the two and a half liter four cylinder it, it was it was the camry se so it's got the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated um it's 201 horsepower so i mean look it's it's not an exciting car 
Um, but it, you know, it's decent on the eyes. It's not as bad as some. The latest Camry is a better looking vehicle it's, it's, than it's it has been in a while. Um, I mean, it, I'm not going to go corner carving with it. No, you're not. But I, but I mean, it, it was it was taut enough. Um, what it was was very comfortable. I mm-hmm. thought it was very well laid out inside. Um, I just it was an interior that I enjoyed being in. And with that kind of fuel economy, uh, my wife went to visit her family in Illinois um, late last year, and she had a she had a much smaller Hyundai that she rented, and her fuel mileage was like thirty five ish or so. So I was shocked at how well this Camry did. Um, the official ratings, I think, are thirty eight on the highway. So, hmm. um, I mean, I now here's the, here's the deal though, right? I'm headed east. A lot of people don't realize from Rapid City, South Dakota, um, I'm just on the edge of the Black Hills. The elevation here before you get up into the hills is like like 3,500 feet above sea level already. Really, once you enter South Dakota, like over by Sioux Falls, you're slowly climbing as you get into the high plains. And then once you cross the Missouri River, which is about midway through the state, you start climbing even more. So headed east... For like that first 400 or so miles through South Dakota, I was sort of going downhill, just about just about all of it, right? Mm-hmm. So that's going to help. Um, you also have your westerly winds that are primarily blowing in that direction. Um, so I, I had a tailwind for most of the way. And you can see that in my return trip. My return trip, um, I think my average was like 36 or 37, which is still phenomenal. But, uh, you know, it's that's a good case of why you don't just always believe what you see and why when you do testing, like, especially when it comes to speeds and things, multiple directions matter. It, mm-hmm. it matters in a major way. So, I mean, yeah, all total the Camry, like I said, it wasn't an inspiring car, but I mean, folks, this is why this is the best selling sedan in North America. It's comfortable. It's reliable. Um, I actually brought a lot of things back from my parents' home back here to South Dakota I had boxes and boxes and boxes stashed in there. It has a surprising amount of space. Um, and it just, I mean, it does everything that you need it to do. And and this car too, it's the SE. So it's not even the higher trim level. Mm-hmm. Um, it still had all of Toyota's, um, it had a Toyota safety sense. Yeah. So, Which is and, standard now pretty much across well, the board. And in this case, it also included the lane centering feature, which it's not a level two system. But it will track around corners, you know, you know, fairly highway high. corners, like you know, you're kind yeah, of yeah, actual... yeah, shallow, shallow highway corners. Yeah. So I mean, I had that system active the whole way. Once I got into the settings and learned how to fine tune it, because when I first set it, um, it was set for a very high sensitivity. So that damn car is so it's like a <laughs> freaking pinball going down the highway, just bouncing from from edge to edge. Once you turn that sensitivity down. I mean, it was actually a pretty good system. It it made the trip very, very relaxing. And it's a pretty relaxing trip anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the biggest city I get near is Minneapolis. And I didn't even take that route on the way back. I took the more southern route through rural sections of Wisconsin uh, on two-lane roads just because, hey, it's a road trip. Yeah, I w- went to see family, but it's also a road trip. And that's mm-hmm. part of what makes a road trip cool is going on some of the less beaten paths right mm-hmm, definitely so, so yeah talking that, about that was, road trips there, yeah, there's was, a few fine. important questions that I need, I need to ask you oh, boy. uh what did you eat along the way <laughs> i'm ashamed i'm ashamed of what i ate um for the longest time looks like my choice road trip food has just been some mcdonald's chicken mcnuggets okay you just you get a box of chicken mcnuggets you can set them there on the console it's not a sloppy ass sandwich no, unless yeah. unless you're stopping and spending you know, like an hour or so to have a nice sit down dinner. Uh, when, when I, I'm, I like to stay on the road. I'm with you. Exactly. If I'm going somewhere, it's like, let's just hammer on down the road. I mean, unless I'm in a really nice area where I might stay for a while, let's just hammer on down the road. So McDonald's chicken McNuggets, usually my food. I didn't really, I didn't have that though, until my return trip um, towards the end of the return trip, actually. Um, instead, going out because and here's another thing where uh, these safety systems kind of come into play when you have a car that's kind of that'll self-center itself it's 
a little bit easier. And I hesitate to say this because I'm suggesting people be less observant and diligent behind the wheel. And you should never be that. But if you want to turn to your right and for example, open up a breakfast crunch wrap from Taco Bell, <laughs> as some people might do. Maybe I did three times on this trip. I'm ashamed to say uh, it's easy. The car is going straight down the highway. You can take your hands off the wheel for a couple seconds, open up that crunch wrap, get yourself set up. You can have your hand sitting on the wheel. You can enjoy the crunch wrap. That's how I pretty much, that's how I started pretty much every morning um, on my journey. I was usually near a Taco Bell. And I tell you what, I didn't start from Rapid City with a breakfast crunch wrap. It's just like, oh, I'll just get one on the way. I had to go all the hell away across South Dakota, like 250 miles before I found another Taco Bell. So Taco Bell fans, if you're traveling through South Dakota, make sure you're prepared for that big stretch from like the Corn Palace and Mitchell and the east side until you get to Rapid City. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with Taco John's. But yeah, and that's what I was about to say. Once you're in Wisconsin, you're in Taco John's country, baby. There's, like, there's Taco. Well, there's Taco John's out here, too. I See, I mean... Let's let's be honest. Taco Bell and Taco John's neither are great. Well, one of them was called Taco John's. You don't expect tacos from a guy named John. But so right in, in the university I went to, I believe I looked at the map once. I believe we have the most southern located Taco John's restaurant <laughs> available. This is in Athens, Ohio. So I have been to a Taco John's. And their love of putting potatoes on everything. I, oh, that they classic they do. Mexican dish potatoes. It's just such like it's very much Wisconsin Mexican <laughs> food, is what it is. It's, yeah, you're you're right. Potatoes on everything. I haven't been there a lot. Their tacos are kind of greasy, and huh, it's, I know it's I, novelty. I'm, I'm a fan of novelty. Like I know you're a Taco Bell fan, and Clint, we also work with, is a Taco Bell fan. But like once I get into the areas of like the regional fast foods, I, I want some regional fast food. I want me some Taco John's. You know, I, I might miss Taco John's one day, but when I was on this trip, it's like I want my damn breakfast crunch wrap with the little Cinnabon things in there that I think oh, are, are gross. They're, they're made of like gross or they're made of like crack and like sunshine. I was gonna I, say I don't, like, I don't know what's in there. peanuts and fat, but okay. I, I, well, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of fat in there too. Um, I also had a bag of Dots pretzels. Now I don't okay, know if people yeah. are familiar with Dots pretzels. I, I thought they were just pretty much a Dakota thing because they're made in North Dakota. I never saw them when I lived back in Michigan. So I, I bought them in Ohio. Well, That's yeah, I just I just learned over this trip. Uh, some family members said, yeah, I've seen these at, uh, at Meyer, which is a, a department store, kind of a food store, Grocery, kind of a Walmart esque. It, it's, it's a Walmart competitor back in the, yeah. in the great lakes region Yep, that, uh, you know, see them there. So I had three bags of these pretzels. I went ahead and, and opened up one. And so I'm just snacking on some pretzels while I've got my, uh, my, uh, my breakfast crunch wrap. That was kind of my main food going out. Um, I didn't get into my chicken McNuggets until the trip home. Um, I was trying to stay pretty light because I mean, let's be honest, I could, I could stand to lose a few pounds here and sitting, sitting in the car, eating freaking chicken McNuggets. I mean, that's not going to help anybody, but I spread it out. I mean, that's, that's, but that's just like comfort road trip food. The McNuggets, they're so easy to eat. They're not messy. So I, 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 let me give you my road trip. So I am much more of a gas station food guy rather than a fast food guy. Um, the, the exception to that is I love an egg McMuffin. Um, okay. if it's, if I'm leaving in the morning, I'm getting myself an egg McMuffin, a hash brown, orange juice, and a black coffee. Like that, that's my order of a morning road trip. But once you need this, you know, once it's afternoon, evening, you stop, need to get gas. I love some, uh, honey roasted peanuts. Um, that's big for me. I, I, I'm big into like various like local drinks, your cheer wine. If you're in that part of the country, your, um, oh yeah, but I'm, but I'm not drinking wine. <laughs> no, no, no. Cheer I'm, wine's I'm, I'm, pop. Cheer wine's not wine. Oh, cheer wine is cherry pop. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. No, no, I'm no, not, no. I'm not familiar. I was like, Bruce is drinking wine on his road. No, trips. no, 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 no. Cheer, no, no, no. He um, must be on level three already. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Carter was drunk officer. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but yeah, I love beef jerky. Oh God, some good yeah. jerky. That I'm much more of like pick up stuff at the gas station while you're filling up and like go through and see what's Ooh, there. Like like the like the gas station hot dogs that are, I've never done a gas station hot dog. That have been out, I haven't done that in years. That have been on the roller for like a, although maybe a, maybe a day and a half. When and, I was in high school, a buddy and my a buddy of mine and I we were into so this is a Pennsylvania uh eastern ohio thing there's a gas station called sheets s-h-e-e-t-z before I'm familiar anyone thinks with i said something weird um, i'm familiar with that they do some decent food i've definitely had a sheets burger and not been upset with myself so um granted that was in high school <laughs> so maybe my digestive system has changed since then but you've, you've had a sheets burger and you've not had to deal with sheets, sheets. <laughs> correct <Exactly>. okay okay <laughs> Just want to make sure that was one of those things. It's like, okay, I've got to say it. I can't, not, I, I can't not say it. Of course. No, no, All right. Well, well, okay. So food. Um, I mean, what are the other staples of a road trip? We, we, we've got to talk about music, right? Sure. Music. What do you, what do you listen to on your road trips? Uh, so three things. Um, the first most memorable one is, so my wife and I, uh, this would have been, we wouldn't have been married yet. We would have been just before we got married. She had a conference that she had to go to in Philadelphia. So we drove from Columbus to Philadelphia and we did, we listened to, um, Stephen King's, uh, not the stand, not pet cemetery. Um, Oh, you're in like an audio book land. Yeah. So we did the audio book okay. thing. Um, was it? The Shining? I think it might have been The Shining. Anyway, but yeah, she and I are very much listen to people talk. So we will do podcasts. Um, we, you know, we'll listen to podcasts also from time to time. Um, so we, we have a shared Spotify account, Spotify premium, where there's no ads or anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a few like playlists of, um, there's one that's mostly like 60s, kind of folk-ish rock, kind of, you know, Summer of Love type stuff. And then there's one that's very super heavy 80s synth um, that we listen to. Uh, okay. So, yeah, the, the podcasts, though, are kind of the big thing. She and I, um, How Did This Get Made, which is a kind of a comedy movie podcast. We've been listening to that forever. And that's a very easy one for us, even if it's an older episode. I have all of them. Um, but, yeah, stuff like that. Okay. So now, see... Traditionally, I haven't done much podcasts. I'm usually a music guy. Um, and in fact, the first the first real road trip I took, this is way back in the 90s before I even went to college. I did it with a friend of mine. <laughs> you got a picture of Sheets. You found a picture of Sheets to share with our YouTube audience. I did. You are the master. Okay. So we, I did this road trip with a friend of mine before going off to college. Um, ironically enough, we decided... We said we're just going to keep driving west until we see the Rocky Mountains, right? I mean, that's that's such that's a cool, kid thing to, such a kid thing to do. Um, so we went through, we went through northern Wisconsin. We hit Minneapolis at like five in the morning, and then we found ourselves down on I ninety. And ironically, we made it to Rapid City, which is where I live now. I had you know foreshadowing? I don't mm -hmm. know, maybe, but we went to Mount Rushmore. We did the trip. We had our CD player. We had like the entire Billboard Greatest Hits of the 80s collection, which was, I mean, there was one CD for each year from 1980 through 1989. I think I remember that, actually. And I think and I might like, recall that. We're like, we'll start with 1980 mm -hmm. and we'll just go all the way through. Um, and I can't remember when we got to the end. I just remember... It was a lot of driving and we were like, we don't need to sleep. We'll just drive straight through. We got to Mount Rushmore. I mean, we were, I mean, we were so exhausted. I don't even remember it. <laughs> I don't remember it. I vaguely remember uh, we finally like got a motel somewhere. Uh, I mean, we even, we even, we didn't even stay in rabbit city. It's like, I was like, oh, it's going to be too expensive to stay here because it's a tourist trap. Let's, let's go out to just BFE somewhere. So I think we might have like drove all the way back to pier, which is like an hour and a half away or something. And we were just so exhausted. And then at that point, it's like, 
all right, let's just let's just go to like Marriott's Great America. It was called Marriott's. It wasn't Six Flags back then. Let's just go to Great America, which is over in a in southern Wisconsin, almost to Illinois. It's like let's just get there. And that was, I mean, that was that was supposed to be about a week long. I, th- I think we only spent like three or four days out driving. Wow. But, um, but I learned on this trip. Um, I too have a Spotify premium account and mm-hmm. I just, I just have a playlist called everything that I just have everything lumped into it. And when I say everything, uh, the only thing that's not in there is country. Sorry, people. I just, I am just sick and I'm just sick to death of, Hey, I'm proud of my pickup truck and, and you know, my cowboy hat, even though I wear a cowboy hat because South Dakota, I have to wear a cowboy hat country just doesn't really do anything for me. And I don't really have any rap, but, I mean, otherwise, you can find anything from, from Lady Gaga to 80s glam to 90s grunge to 40s big band. Shout out for Glenn Miller Orchestra. Yeah. In the mood, baby. Um, I got Debussy. I've got musicals. The whole shot. I got really bored with that play playlist in a freaking hurry on this trip. So I I was searching for podcasts. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, what did I end up listening to? I, I did a lot of listening to like the like the nerd soup, uh, which is a which is a pretty big podcast. Um, I found some podcast on just model building for like cars. I ended up coming home with probably about twenty or so plastic models uh, <laughs> that were holding station at my parents' house. So listening for uh, tips and ideas on how to build those. Um, but yeah, man, that first that first road trip where we just went through the eighties, I should have done something like that. I sh- I should have had a plan in mind instead of just letting my everything playlist go on shuffle, because invariably I would get to a song and it's like, no, nah, next one, <laughs> no, nah, next one. It's like, no, nah, next one. It's like this is Spotify. This is the list of songs that I like, and I'm not. It's like, uh, next one. Okay, Pink Floyd. We can listen to this for a little while. I should have just loaded up on Pink Floyd, because I mean. When you're in the middle of nowhere, especially when it's getting dark, listening to Pink Floyd, I mean, if you don't want to dip into illegal drugs, that's probably that's probably the best way to experience Pink Floyd. And I'm not saying I've dipped into illegal drugs because I haven't because I'm saying that because I know my parents listen to the podcast. <laughs> my mom is a big fan of yours, Bruce, by the way. You know what? My parents like the show a lot too. You you have a you have a fan in her. So yeah, no. I mean, I mean that's that's a classic way to enjoy Pink Floyd. And you know, I had a good, I had a few good Pink Floyd moments actually. Here, let me let me share one really quick. Um, I didn't. I used to take pictures like crazy on my road trips, and I've done this one before. Um, so I didn't take a lot of pictures. But on the way back, mm-hmm. you're coming through South Dakota. If you've ever been out here, I mean, when you get on I-90, I mean. It's just, it's flat. The sky is endless and it can be kind of boring except at sunset. And there's a scenic turnout off of I-90 just before you get to the Eastern edge of Badlands National Park. Mm -hmm. You can't see the Badlands from this point, but it's just a beautiful vista out over the prairie. I managed to get there just as the sun was setting. So I jumped out. And uh, grabbed me this. Oh, that's fantastic! And and you know when you see that, I mean, this is now now this is like one of those shots where you need to have some sort of soundtrack in your head, right? So I mean, I mean, pick pick your your meaningful song. I mean, that's that's looking out just over the South Dakota prairie, looking out to the west. You can't see it, but I ninety is just out of the camera shot to the left. Um. Yeah, I mean moments like that are it's it's what makes road trips worth it, right? That's oh, yeah. I mean, that was that was like five minutes, five minutes shy of sunset. So um the last time I did that, I was um I was actually driving my Mustang and I happened to get there just about as the sun was setting. So I took a picture, of course it took it you know, car guy. You gotta take a picture of your car with the sunset. Mm-hmm. I don't have that picture queued up, but it's around somewhere. Okay. Um folks, you know, I actually posted that picture on uh, on Twitter. If you want to follow me along at CH writing, I'll post occasional stuff up like that as I travel around from place to place. So real quick, I yeah. also have a road trip coming up. It's about a 10th of the distance of yours. Um, mm-hmm. I'll be going from Bowling Green, Ohio to Columbus, Ohio and back. 
um, this weekend. And again, my wife and I are fully vaccinated. My mother-in-law is vaccinated. It's, you know, finally time. Everyone, we waited our two weeks, blah, blah, blah. Um, but just a few tips for, so have you ever traveled with a pet with Scarlett? Yes. You have? Okay. I, I've, when uh, my wife and I moved out to, to uh, Rapid City seven years ago, we had two cats that we moved with. Okay. Um, so we will be taking our dog with us. And so we have the sling in the back that goes between the seats. So you can kind of walk around. Um, but over the years of just traveling with him, he'll be six at the end of the month. We've just kind of learned things to do. Um, one thing is that have water, a collapsible water bowl and an extra leash along with you. So, you know, he's obviously on a leash when he gets into the car, but sometimes, like, oh, it gets left somewhere, it gets lost. It's yeah, always don't good to tie have him to the bumper. Don't tie him to the bumper. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's always mud. good to have an extra leash on hand. Um, <laughs> the silicone collapsible water bowls and just a bottle of water in the back is very useful because, you know, they get thirsty even on a trip, just like you do. So, you know, if you're stopping to fill up on gas, pour a little bit of water into the bowl, let him have it. And yeah, um, the sling is super helpful, especially for him. He likes to stand like on the center console. So the sling is supporting his back end and he's on the center console on the front end. So he can look out, watch the road. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just all important things I have learned over my road trip uh, history with a pet is that how to make it easier for them because they're a member of the family too. Yeah, we um, and thanks for saying that, Bruce. Um, it's 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 always a little sad to me to see people that they love their pets, but their pet is just kind of like an accessory. And it's like, no, that's a part of the family that doesn't understand the same things that you do, that may be a little confused. Own own that. Make sure you take care of your pets. They don't understand the same things. So. And especially when it comes to trips and traveling, I mean, public service announcement, don't leave your, don't leave your dog in a hot car, obviously oh God, no, never, no. never do that. Um, so thanks Bruce for bringing that up. Um, we haven't had dogs. We've just had our cats. We don't typically travel uh, with the cats. Obviously when we moved, we, I mean, they're family we, we can't leave yeah. them behind, you know, obviously um, we actually, my wife was their caretaker while I was driving the big loaded down U-Haul. Uh, so we had them in the back of the Mazda, the Mazda six. We had, we actually bought a big um, dog crate. Mm -hmm. We went, we had padded up on the front along with some little peepholes where they could look out the front to see what was going on. <laughs> I mean, I mean, just in case, I mean, God forbid there's a crash or something, right. Right. a little bit of protection. So they're not flying all throughout the car. So we had them in the cage there that, uh, of course we had litter box. We had food and water in there, a nice comfortable place for them to rest. And um, you know, once the trip, you know, after about the first five minutes when they realized that, okay, we're not going to the vet, we're going somewhere else. You know, they, they just kind of settle down and, uh, and, and relax for the journey. Yeah. And um, you're going on a much longer trip than I did. You know, I that don't was, yeah, need that, well, that was food and water constantly for them. It's just, yep. I would recommend if you're going to go on, you know, my road trip's going to be two, two and a half hours. You know, if I stop for gas, I, I'm going to, you know, it's stupid simple. It's just a little piece <laughs> of silicone. You extend it. It's a dog bowl. You pour a little water in it. You just, you know, you make sure your, you know, your your pump's good. You know, sure. it's it's nothing. It's easy stuff. Sure. And and I will say this too for people that are listening, that are wondering about COVID. Um, I've, I won't say I've been overboard, but I've I've stayed cautious through all of this. Um, oh, yeah. I, I I follow I follow the rule of science. Um, and I recognize there are people with considerably more intelligence on some things than what I have. So, um, I've been trusting what they say and I was, I wasn't really nervous about making the trip, but I thought, okay, you know, we'll see how this plays out. It's as far as I'm concerned, if you're vaccinated, it's time. I don't know. I don't know I, what, what the I, CDC is recommending, but I, I felt very safe. Um, out on the roads, the gas stations. Um, I stayed at a couple of hotels. Um, I thought, I mean, as, as long as you just keep your wits about you, no problems. It's time to yeah, get back I on the think, road. Uh, yeah, I think if you're vaccinated, if the people at your destination, you know, your family, my mother-in-law, et cetera, are vaccinated, I think it's fine. I think, uh, 
and I've talked about this with my parents, is that I think there's a courtesy right now in still wearing a mask. There is. I I believe there is a courtesy, yes. Me, you know, you can debate what, if I'm vaccinated, you know, I'm fairly certain that I don't have anything, but there's a courtesy because other people don't know that. Go ahead and wear a mask just to make other people feel better. Right. It doesn't hurt you. It's not. Or at least it doesn't hurt me. It's there. There's no effect there. So just you know, you know, make be other people. Yeah, exactly. Be courteous. Be courteous. I, you know, I have kind of a chunky stomach. I wear nice, big, comfortably fitting clothing for the same reason to make other people comfortable. <laughs> right? We're yeah. wearing. We, we have to wear underwear. Wear a mask. It's not any big deal. Not any yeah. big deal, especially if you have a cool tiger shark mask like I have. Oh, do you? Okay. Where it's it's like a, it looks like a big P forty warhawk coming at you. Yeah, man, I'll rock that for as long as I can. Cool. I think that I think that's just I think that's just fun. So yeah, that was my road trip in a nutshell. Um, and I would say thumbs up. Do it again. Um, I did. The, I mean, the the first leg I did nine hundred and about nine hundred and twenty miles one day. Um, that just left like 300 for the next day. And then I did the same thing coming back, uh, 300 the first day and then 900 after that. Um, if you have a good, comfortable car, I gotta say Camry, and that's why you're number six last year and the best selling sedan in America. Yeah. Everything else was crossovers. The top three were pickups. I mean, it's not the most inspiring car, but it was comfortable. It ate up the miles. It treated me well. I will I mean, say though, I would I say, say your base F one hundred and fifty isn't an inspiring truck either. Well, I, for me, full size pickup trucks have replaced the full size family sedan of of decades past. Has but that's not family. an exciting vehicle to drive. No, no, it's it's not going to be an exciting vehicle. But it's, so, it's going to be you know, it's going to be comfortable. It's going to be sizable. Mm-hmm. It's not going to get forty six miles to the gallon average. No. Um, I will say this before we move on here. When I was driving on my way back through Wisconsin, um, the roads I was on there, the primarily 55, 60 mile an hour roads moving into towns, that was the spot where I would have traded the Camry for my Mustang in a heartbeat. Um, I'll, I'll put the car up here. I don't know if I've, if I've shown the car before. I think maybe a while but, uh, ago. You haven't in a while, certainly. But, but I mean... The first, the first big trip I took back to Michigan, you know, I took this car um, with the roof up. I mean, it was pretty quiet. The air conditioning blows nice and cold. Um, it was actually far more comfortable than I was expecting. Now with the loud exhaust, with the, with the shorter gears, it would just be a, just a nightmare. But when I was rolling through rural Wisconsin, I, I was just yearning for the top down wind in your hair, the V8 rumble out the back. It's not fast but it's fun. And I bring this up because, you know, that that's another, that's another facet of road tripping Mm -hmm. for car enthusiasts like us is enjoying the drive and enjoying the car. And that was, that was the point where I was just like, you know what? I don't want the Camry. I want that (laughs) As, as, as loud as it is. I want that. But then once I got back to the highway and I was back up to like 75, 80 miles an hour, I was just like, Nope. Just turn on a podcast or put on some music and just go with it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, folks, tell us about, yeah, tell yeah. us about your road trips. I would love to know because it's kind of getting to be, you know, depending on where you live. And I understand it's availability time. of vaccines and things like that are varying it's place time. to place around the country. But once it is safe for you to do so, I think it's okay to go ahead and say to do so. Assuming again, mm-hmm. You're okay. The people you're seeing are okay. Along the way, maybe wear a mask, but otherwise, it's, it's time and it's good for the soul. I yeah. mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably like cars. You know exactly what we're on about. It's good for the soul. Um, and I'm not saying that because I like the Kia Soul. I'm talking about <laughs> the real soul. It's good for the soul. And yeah, man, ah, we would love to hear about some of your epic road trips. Some of the places oh, totally. been. I mean, I've I've been fortunate in my career um, through both just pleasure and work to have driven almost everywhere in the United States. I mean, I've driven from literally coast to coast. I've driven through the South. The only places I haven't been are the Pacific Northwest and Kansas. Somehow I've been all around Kansas. 
and I haven't been in Kansas. So maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's my next road trip. Just, I'm just going to drive somewhere in Kansas and come back. Right. So podcast at motor one.com email us, uh, talk to us about some of your road trips. We want to hear it. Yep. And uh, so I have to say, we received a exceedingly nice email. Wow. I know. Comment. Um, I'm just going to read it in full and then I'll give my reaction. Um, I won't say the person's name just for privacy reasons in case they don't want it to be known. But so, hey, guys, I really enjoy your shows, especially the one about the Mustang and Bronco. Um, And I think you two are way better than the new Top Gear shows. Anyway, keep up the good work. Have a nice day. So being compared to Top Gear. Even even the new ones. Yeah, even the new ones. Like. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks. You. I don't know if I agree with you. I don't think I'm that good, but thank you I for thinking I'm that good. I mean, I haven't wrecked any cars. I think I'm the shorter of the two of us, so that, that would kind of make me Hammond. I haven't wrecked any cars. Um, I think you're May. Yeah. Damn it. I, I probably am. I think you're May. O- only with shorter hair, because I, I do kind of have... Well, I got to say, his uh, his series, The Reassembler... If you ever saw that, I've not like, seen that. You keep recommending it to oh me. Oh my like, god! Just, yet. just him putting things back together slowly. It's, <laughs> it's like the most ridiculous, obscure, amazingly awesome Zen thing possible. I mean, he's just sitting there and he's talking like this in his monotone, and he says, "Look at this new screwdriver I have, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is." precisely made for Japanese motorcycles. And of course he's doing it in an accent that I can't do. I'm not even going to try it, but it's just, it's like everything that Clarkson would hate. Mm-hmm. He, he does on that program. So, and, and I love it. And I actually, that inspired me to go out and get a, just like a huge set of custom screwdrivers just, to, just to have for that one use. I like God that. bless you, May. So I, yeah, I guess I'm May. He also has that series, James May in Japan, which I haven't watched yet, but it's like a travel series. That's Um, a good series, too. He totally gets upset. He gets upset at the producer at one point because the producer's (laughs) like, no, we got to redo the shot. He's like, why do we got to redo the shot? There was a car behind you. Well, of course, there's a bloody car behind (laughs) me. There's a road there. (laughs) I I keep needing to watch that. Just haven't got to see it yet. Awesome. But thank you very much for that comment. And we always love to hear those comments. Um, This probably means somebody is going to send us um, some hate mail. And, you know, yeah. we, we're okay hearing that, too. We're oh, okay totally. hearing that, too. We've so. gotten it before. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast at MotorOne.com. Uh, Bruce, let's let's move on to the uh, to the tech aspect of this. And I mean, this is this is kind of a big deal because we had a chance to, uh, uh, to talk with a very special guest from Ford. Why don't you set this up for us, Bruce? Sure thing. So um, we are actually – we recorded this interview earlier today. So – through the magic of podcast making, you'll be we'll fix it in post. Second. Exactly. So we'll be talking to Kate Pierce, who is Ford's director of retail operations. And we'll be talking to her about Ford power up, which is basically their name for their um, over the air software update system. So without further ado, here's us and Kate circa what? Six hours ago now, six hours ago. We are here with Kate Pierce, who is Ford's Director of Retail Operations, and we are talking about Power Up, uh, which is Ford's new, uh, would you call it branding or initiative uh, for their over-the-air updates. And so, Kate, if you want to take it away and tell us a little bit about it. Sure. There's a lot happening at Ford right now, and we're really excited about it. Um, As you mentioned, we are launching Ford Power Up software updates. So these recently went out starting with our new 21 model year Mach-E's, Mustang Mach-E's and F-150's. But essentially our software updates are really designed to deliver regular, timed, convenient and seamless quality updates, but also new features and capabilities to the vehicle. So this is really similar to what happens with your phone and your connected devices where you're constantly getting updates. We wanna make sure your vehicle has the latest and greatest as well. But the key for us at Ford is that we want that to be seamless. So it's not as disruptive to our customers as it would be on your phone or say your laptop. So um, other automakers are also kind of starting to get into the over the air update thing. Tesla kind of comes top of mind. What makes Ford power up different from what other automakers are doing? 
Right. I think there's really two key components here. The first is that at Ford Motor Company, we've always believed in democratizing technology. So this is technology that's not just going to be available on some high end models or a few vehicles. We are going to be rolling this out um, to over 33 million vehicles by 2028. So this is going to be part of what it means to own a Ford as we move forward into the future. The other thing that makes this so different is that our engineers have really worked with next gen electrical architecture and advanced technology stacks to make this update seamless. So what's actually happening in the background is that while your software is being loaded to the vehicle, the old software still exists. So in many cases, customers won't even know that new software is being downloaded uh, and we'll just keep driving and then we'll be notified that an update is, is there. If the vehicle does need to be turned off and turned back on for the software update, customers then can schedule when they want that to happen. So if they want to do it overnight when they're not using the vehicle or on, on a weekend when they're not planning to be out, they set the schedule and the terms. So I really think it's the democratization and the seamless way in which we are delivering these updates to make it more convenient for our customers is really what sets Ford apart. Okay, and and as I understand, I mean, this is going to be for um, things in the infotainment system, but this will also be used for like like critical system updates, correct? Absolutely, I think that is yet another reason why Ford is so different. Uh, over 110 computer modules can be updated um, through our Ford PowerUp software updates. So this isn't just one set of features. Uh, this could be across 110, which is almost every module in the vehicle. So we can send over quality fixes. We can send over new features. We can send over enhancements um, to vehicles. Uh, really, it's about delivering the features uh, and benefits that customers are looking for. And again, making sure that vehicles we produce today will have access to those features tomorrow. Okay. And um, now th this is a subscription service, correct? Actually, the capability for Ford Power Up is actually coming with the vehicle. So okay. when you purchase our 21 model years with our Sync 4 systems, the Ford Power Up software capability is automatically included with the vehicle. What also is coming later this year and will be delivered by Ford Power Up software updates is a new partnership that we have with Amazon. And we're going to be bringing Amazon Alexa built in hands free features into the vehicle. Um, and we are actually going to be bringing in that capability at first uh, through the Power Up software. And we're going to be offering that for three years complimentary okay. service. And I think that's that's really unique in the marketplace and, and working with Amazon. This is now the broadest rollout um, of Amazon Alexa built in that they've seen because we are putting it through. Um, starting with our 21 and 22 model years this year, 700,000 vehicles and then continuing. Um, and again, the service, the ability to use Amazon Alexa, the same type of service you use in your home will be complimentary for three years. Okay. And, and that's the subscription service, correct? The, uh, the over the air updates, that's just part of the, the vehicle. I just want to make sure we're, we're clear. Well, yeah, the over the air updates come with your vehicle okay so you don't you don't pay for those okay. when we send the over the um sorry the ford power up update to your vehicle later this year for alexa there will be no charge for the alexa service and you will have complimentary access to the alexa skills for three years as well so um it, it's a subscription but it's complimentary Gotcha. Okay. Where other so, manufacturers are charging you to actually purchase data plans to use sure. those skills, um, you will not have to do that with the Ford vehicles. So real quick, just going back, regarding the over-air updates, is there a plan in place as to whether that's going to be like a scheduled thing where there's going to be, you know, an update on the first of the month or something like that every month, or whether it'll be more of an ad hoc as features are kind of tested and added, whether that it'll happen that way? Yeah, we continue to work with our engineers and, and we do have cadences that we do put out. Um, it's important for us to ensure that the testing and the quality of the release um, is at the top level before we put these out. So there will be cadences. Customers will be notified um, if there is a, a need to turn off the vehicle that they can schedule that. Or again, they'll receive that update 
um, seamlessly, and then they'll receive release notes letting them know what was delivered. But but we are developing a cadence within the company to make sure that we're developing and releasing um, regular updates, again, for quality, but also for new features. Okay. And I've, I've got to ask the question that I know will be on the minds of people, uh -oh. uh, especially with the integration with Amazon Alexa, um, because I mean, that will be able to connect uh, with your home if you're using it at home it, it yeah. as a smart home, correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, with regards to privacy, though, yeah. if, if say, vehicle is stolen or if somebody just breaks into it or you loan the vehicle to a friend or family... In theory, you loan it to your friend. Your friend's going to be a good person. They're not going to try to, you know, mess with you and switch the lights on and off in your house while they're driving your car. But I mean, on a on a serious note, um, what I mean, can anyone just access these these features if they if if the vehicle is stolen? If somebody is in there, um, I mean, in theory, unlocking your home. Are there any security uh, safeguards in place for this? Well, I think the key is, is that Amazon and Ford Motor Company value consumer privacy. And so we are working to ensure that whether it's data that we're passing, we're not passing along consumer um, protected information and also trying to build um, safety precautions into all of our systems on both sides. So I can't speak specifically to how Amazon is protecting that on the, on the back end, but privacy of consumer data is a top priority for both of us. And do you know if people will be able to opt out of the Amazon Alexa service, say they don't have any Alexa devices or at their home, or they just, they feel uncomfortable? Because one of the things with this feature that um, I know that you guys have mentioned is that there's no push to talk. It's just kind of listening. And some people, whether they're necessary or not, just have privacy concerns about that. So will there be an opt out? Yes. So in fact, in order to enable the Alexa built-in capability, you will actually have to log into your Alexa account. And that will be enabled through the head unit of the vehicle. So you always have the choice as to whether or not you want to utilize that feature. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I'm, so to have Alexa basically listening, that, that's the only way you have that that come on is when you log into your account. Because I know there are, I mean, there are people, and it, it happens to all of us where it's like, Ah, you know, I could go for some Twizzlers. It's been a while since yeah. I had Twizzlers. And then like 10 minutes later, an ad for Twizzlers pops up on your Facebook page. And it's like, okay, who's listening? I, I mean, is that, right. is that, there do is, people need to be concerned here? No. So there is a wake word that can be used. So it's Alexa. Okay. Please add Twizzlers to my shopping list or to my shopping cart. <laughs> so the wake word, uh, or you could actually use your, your push to talk as well. Um, to enab enable some of the car functionality as well. So okay. uh, it, it's not just automatically listening. There is a wake up word that you would use to access or to start some of those Alexa skills. Okay. And just for the record, if I get an ad for Twizzlers in the next hour, I'm, uh, I'm going to be talking. That was not me yet. We, we launched that later <laughs> this year. <laughs> it's coming up later this year. Are you going to okay. ask for a full year supply? I, I would put that in. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I've, I've encountered a, a lot of people that are, um, I guess, I guess a good term is tech phobic. They're, they're very nervous about excessive technology in vehicles. And uh, I mean, Ford is bringing this out first and foremost with the F-150, which yeah. is the best selling vehicle by a wide margin. So, I mean, are there concerns that Ford could be alienating some of its buyers by going too deep into the tech, into the tech field with the, uh, with the F-150? Um, and I mean, are, are there means for people if they don't necessarily want all of these over the air updates to say, hey, you know what, we're just going to turn this off. If things come up, I want to go into my dealer and have things taken care of at my dealer. Mm -hmm. So the customer always has the choice whether or not to download a Ford Pass, I'm sorry, Ford uh, software updates, as well as utilize any of our technology features. So okay. that that always lies with the consumer. I think the key benefit, though, is as we work uh, to improve features and improve uh, fixes in the vehicles, I think customers will find that, that this is technology they want. Um, if it enhances their F-150 and their capability, certainly we want them to have that access because we know that the work that we're doing only makes their work lives and their personal lives better. 
Uh, we're also partnering with Amazon to continue to find new skills that we can build, especially in the commercial space, which is so critical for our F-Series customers to see how else we can help them do their work more effectively. So at the end of the day, um, while some consumers may have some concerns, I do think that the services that they're going to find and the fact that we're constantly updating and keeping their vehicle up to date is really going to override some of those initial concerns about how do we use this technology or, or what is it. The benefits and the services they're going to receive will directly impact their vehicle, the work that they do, and the personal lives that they lead. Okay. So just one last question, if that's okay. Um, sure. Regarding regarding the Alexa services, um, with that three years of free functionality, have what? How does that work in regards to subsequent owners? Um, so, for example, I lease an F one fifty for two years. I take it back to you know, turn it in. Does the next person who gets that do they get one year of that Alexa functionality? Do they get a new three year access? How does that work? Yep. So the three years stays with the vehicle, not with the owner. Okay. So uh, for our vehicles that will receive the Ford Power Up uh, software update later this year to get the functionality, the three years will start then. Okay. Um, as we move into to the next generation of vehicles, that software will come in the plant. So the day that they buy their vehicle and activate their modem, that three year uh, complimentary service will start and it will continue and it will stay with the vehicle. So if you get a, a 12 month lease that you purchase um, from a Ford dealer, you would get two years of additional service. You would just need to log into your Alexa account in order to access that, that, okay. that content and that capability. Gotcha. Is, is there any look right now as to what that subscription will cost? Is, is there anything you can talk about on price? The co the complimentary Alexa services. Yeah, uh, after the three uh, years. After, 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 after yeah, after the complimentary yeah. period. Uh, not at this point. We haven't announced any additional pricing, but but I think the real key is is just even having that first three years, um, and really getting to learn the features, really testing it out, and continuing to add um, as we work with our partnership with Amazon more skills. Um, they're going to have a great three years of experience. Uh, and then we'll work to understand what customers are looking for from us, um, what kinds of services they want to continue and make an announcement at that point. Okay. Um, and just, sorry, you mentioned the modem and it got me thinking. Sure. Um, so the modem in the vehicle, obviously people all over the country buy F-150s and Mach-E's and you know, other Ford vehicles. Yeah. And some of them are going to be in more rural areas. Sure. What kind of coverage does the modem have? So you know, if someone who lives out in the middle of nowhere, are they still going to have access to these updates and be able to get them? Is the coverage map, give me an idea of that, please. Yeah, so there's a couple of things that are running through. Um, where you have, We have 4G modems in, in our newest vehicles that are running through. So wherever you have that coverage, certainly you have that capability. Um, if you are in a very remote area, um, you do have the option for our Ford Power Up updates to go over cellular. Um, or wire or Wi-Fi, okay. um, and then or you know at, at any point you can also work with your dealership, your local dealership, or or go to a place where you have Wi-Fi to access sure. that. I, I'm in okay. Western South Dakota, and I can promise you there are some properly yeah. rural areas where there is nothing. Sure, so, I used to travel Montana uh, for oh, for okay. Ford Motor Company and other you places. Know. I understand that. Um, <laughs> you the know, key is there's wireless. You, know, you can go Wi-Fi. You can go cellular. Um, the Wi-Fi is interesting. I hadn't seen that mentioned anywhere. That's really clever. Yeah. 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 Yep. So what with data plans and some of those things, right? Yeah. You can always connect to bring in connectivity into your vehicle as well. So um, we also offer data plans uh, through Ford Motor Company as well. So there's different options out there. Okay. Gosh. Well, well Kate, thank you very much for uh, taking some time to talk with us. It's exciting new technology. I mean, the 21st century is obviously yeah. here, and it's and it's moving. We're Twenty at a years very, into it, and, and, and if, <laughs> twenty years into it. But I mean, when you're talking autos, I mean, I the, just the last few years. I mean, this is like. I mean, we're we're. It feels like we're in the future now, right? So, yeah, it, it um, really is. It has now come to automotive. Uh, and it's coming at Ford in a very big way with some very big numbers. Again, almost 33 million uh, by 2028 will have this capability. So and, and it's really be, exciting to see. And that'll be like from the top all the way down to to your your entry level models. 
uh, most of our models. There will be some uh, commercial applications or smaller, uh, you know, utility vehicle, uh, not utility, but uh, commercial vehicles that may not have it. But yeah, for the most part, you're going to find that it's offered across the lineup um, okay. and, and available. All right. Great. Well, well thank fantastic. you again for joining us. Uh, we know you have other people to talk to, so we really appreciate you coming on to Absolutely. our little rambling about cars show and rambling about Ford with us. We appreciate yeah. it. This was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. And uh, anytime we love to, we love to talk about what's going on at Ford Motor Company these days. There's a lot to talk about. When we first heard this news, it's like, well, okay. I mean, a lot of automakers are doing over the air updates now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think this one does go a little bit above and beyond at least some of what we've heard from other automakers. I mean, uh, we just had the interview there. Mm -hmm. What, what were your initial thoughts on the, on, on the way Ford is rolling this out? So obviously Ford is not first to be here right. in the over the air update thing. Like I mentioned during the interview, kind of Tesla is kind of the big one. There are others, but there's, they're not first, but they're early. Um, you know, there are a lot of automakers we're seeing that haven't introduced this tech yet. So it's it's nice to see them not necessarily on the bleeding edge, but on the cutting edge of what's happening in the industry. Now, their take that uh, these over the year updates, it's not going to be just for entertainment purposes, but also for critical systems. And I think um, I think Kate said, what, 110 various it's modules. over a hundred, yeah. Um, over over a hundred that will go along with these updates. Um, and and I know we mentioned this in the interview. I'll just I'll just reiterate. Um, going forward, of course, this is starting on the F one fifty and Mach E, and then they're going to bring it out um, next for Bronco. Um, and and for F one fifty. Yep. And and the goal is to have uh, what thirty three million cars set up by twenty twenty eight. Hold on. I would uh, say, so, so 33 million vehicles yeah. by 2028. And so, well, just to reiterate it, so it's more than 110 modules and they specify on high end mod models. Right. So on other vehicles, it might be less, but up to 110 right now or more than 110 right now. And that's happening. Yeah. That's, that's not a subscription service. No, nope. you don't pay for that. That's happening. Um, what's interesting here is their affiliation with Amazon Alexa. That is a subscription service. Right. And, and they're being a, if I'm being, they're being a bit cagey about yeah. what happens at the end of that. Um, for better or worse, I can understand three years is a long time. And yeah. No, that's, I, th I think that's a decent deal. Yeah. Um, but we don't know what happens after that three years. But I did think, and it's something that, as far as I know, we didn't know before is that. So if you trade in your vehicle, the next person gets to kind of take over your, you know, your service on that. So that's, that's kind of a good deal for the next guy down the line. You might not get a full, you know, three years of that service, but you're going to at least get a good taste of it. Yeah. I mean, it stays with the vehicle, which is mm -hmm. interesting. Um, of course, one thing we talked about in the interview that I, I think bears a little bit more discussion here with you, Bruce, um, is the privacy aspect. Um, we, yeah. we are we are talking about Amazon Alexa uh, with voice commands. So with that system running, there is something always listening for you to say, you know, the special activation words. And mm -hmm. I know there are going to be people out there that are a little leery of that. Yeah, um, I mean, you have to there. There's going to be someone out there that thinks Jeff Bezos is listening to everything that they say. <laughs> right. I, you, I, that person exists. It's, I mean, especially, oh my God. I mean, think about, think about, put yourself two years into the future. Now you're driving your 2022 Ford F-150 with Alexa plugged in and all that. And you're having a discussion while going down, we'll say, you know, a, well, not a major highway, but like a, a, a fairly substantial two lane road where there are lots of advertisements, lots of billboards, you're talking with someone about, oh gosh, I'm really hungry. I could go for a bag of Cheetos. I haven't had Cheetos in a long time. And then three miles down the road, you come upon a digital billboard flashing an ad for Cheetos. I mean, I, I, am I crazy for bringing this up? I think maybe a little bit, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah like, I'm, I'm a little I don't want to. I'm a little bit. I don't want to paint Ford or Amazon with that brush without knowing more. 
Right. But and, and there's a lot there, that, we, that we still don't know. And, exactly. But I can definitely understand people maybe having that fear um, because at the point that you raised during our interview is that, you know, you're talking about Twizzlers and you're, you know, <laughs> suddenly you see an ad on Facebook about Twizzlers and you're like, I wasn't talking, you know, how the hell and, did it know I wanted Twizzlers? And I um, know that's, I mean, I know that's ha- that has to have happened to just about everybody at this point. Oh, right? totally. Um, so the fear is justified. I just don't want to actually say that Ford or Amazon would do that. Right. Both because it's libelous and also because I don't know the entire extent of what this tech is doing. Right. And I mean, th- there's still a lot we don't know. Um, I mean, Ford has, has said, I mean, they have they have their top people and, and also on Amazon side top people doing their best practices for security. And mm-hmm. I mean, I, I well, it's security it, versus privacy. Have, That's not so much a security, security issue. Privacy, it's a privacy right. issue. Right. But well, to me, it, it kind of goes one in the same. I mean, it's not necessarily the same, but it, it's kind of in that same ballpark. Mm-hmm. And and I mean, of course, I mean, you have to have that when you're talking about, um, you know, especially on the security side, the potential for hackers to get into vehicles. I mean, you have to have that in place. Right. Especially um, in a case like this, where it has access to so many modules, you need right. to have a security in place. And they, and to be totally fair, Ford is saying that that security exists. Yep. But, you know, with it having that much access, you have to be very careful with who can send that software out. Because, you know, just the implications are could be very bad. Right. And again, I am reiterating this. Ford is saying all those protections are there. They are there. But um, it's just a scary thought, though, of, you know, what. Well, I mean, yeah. it, it can be. And we're, I mean, we're talking about the F-150. This this has been the best selling vehicle in the United States for a very, very, very long time. Year? So, yeah. I mean, I, I know. And that's why I was asking the question during the interview. I know there are going to be people out there that aren't necessarily on board with having you know, this kind of technology and, and to be totally fair to Kate, she said people can opt out. You, you like, can opt, you can opt if out. You do, you if you don't out. feel comfortable, don't you're, you're good. You don't, don't sign up for Alexa. Don't put any of your stuff in. You're good. You can so, still go, you can still go to the dealership to have your, uh, to have your updates taken care of. So I, I well, mean, I, yeah, I have to, yeah. I have to salute Ford for that one. It, it sounds like they were kind of thinking maybe the same things that, that we were, Hey, Maybe there, are, maybe there are some people out there that aren't ready to have this kind of connectivity in their F one hundred and fifty. Now, on the other side, and of I that, thought the Wi Fi thing was super interesting. Yeah. That the fact that they thought of that, that yeah, they're going to be. So we keep talking about the F one hundred and fifty, and it's only because it's the most popular vehicle. We know it's coming to the F one hundred and fifty, the Mach E, the Super Duty, the Edge, the Bronco. I think that's the five they've announced so far, but it's eventually going to roll out to even more and more. There are owners of those vehicles that live in rural enough areas that the onboard (laughs) modem is not going to be able to pick up a signal. But the fact that it can connect via Wi-Fi, I think enough of those people probably have some form of internet at home Mm -hmm. that they could still get that stuff. And that's really smart on Ford's part. I got to say, like, I think that's, I think it's a smart move. And I mean, but if you think about it, it's kind of a move that had to happen because, I mean, there there is much more to the United States than you know the major cities. And oh sure, I, mean, I, you I, mean, and I, I don't I, live in major cities. I mean, I see that. I see that firsthand. I I mean, Rapid City. There's I think we're eighty thousand people, which I mean that's a decent sized place, but it's certainly not a big city. But but you go twenty miles northeast of here, northeast of me, and there's nothing. There's no cell signal. There is nothing. You go a hundred miles northeast of me, and there's really nothing. Like, there's not even a house in view anywhere. Nothing. And but but this is where you have the the men and the women that are running the F one fifty, the the super duties, because they're. I mean, this is ranch land, mm-hmm. and and they may not have just one. They might have a fleet. And they're not going to have any connectivity, but I bet you a gazillion dollars they have a satellite internet hookup at their house. Exactly, and they're taken care of. So it was it was very the news kind of came just suddenly out of the blue, um, yeah. but it's it's sort of a 
I mean, obviously we're, we're 20 years into the 21st century, but I mean, this, this now is starting to feel like the future to me. It really does. It, the fact that, you know, they're saying, is it 33 million? I got to look it up the number again. Uh, 30, 33 million by 2028. Yeah. That's just, that's an amazing number of vehicles to be able to support updates just over the air. Right. Um, you know, we've seen it from Tesla before, like I said, but not 33 million vehicles, not, you know, any sort of numbers like that. And it, as Kate was talking, I was just thinking about what sort of things could be possible there. Like imagine, you know, it's hooked up to all these modules. Say you have an adaptive suspension system and they figure out that, you know, you were just driving in Michigan. I've driven in Michigan. The roads there can be kind of bumpy, even on the highways. Like, oh, let's make the comfort setting even more plush and comfortable. And they can just push that update out and it's done. Or, or, they or, can... or, or a message. We, we notice your location. Would you like to, you know, have, have this change? Hey, that's, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, it, that's it, a distinct possibility. It, it's a fascinating future. Um, and, you know, we kind of started this conversation talking about the privacy and security things, and maybe we sounded down on it, but there's really interesting applications for this tech too that could be like kind of game changing for vehicles. Uh, I'm just thinking about literally what you just said is that think about like regional variations and how vehicles work that, you know, you have one set of software for vehicles that are in the north and are dealing with snow and stuff like that. So you have one set of traction control software there, but then the guys in Florida, like they're never going to see snow. So we can, we can have a different layout there. It, it, it's really and, it's, and it's not hardware that you're going to a dealership to install. Right. It's, it's just a bit of code. I mean, I mean, I guess it's not unlike, you know, a lot of the aftermarket tuners that people can use for various horsepower settings. Sure. If, if, if you're running your vehicle, if you're daily driving your weekend racer and yeah. you run your mild tune through the week, and then for the weekend, you plug in your aggressive tune, mm -hmm. you know, only, only this isn't just something relegated to power and engine, but it's, it's a much broader area of drivability. Yeah. And I mean, the roads here in South Dakota, are really really smooth <laughs> honestly compared to michigan and that makes more sense to me than anything how cool would it be to to be able to just have a different completely different type of adaptable suspension algorithm or whatever it is that you can plug in when you travel back to where you know the roads are going to be just crap mm -hmm. i mean that's just one aspect so yeah oh, no, Bravo. That's literally just one thing and it you know with all of those modules it could be anything we um you and I listened to uh, a press conference by Ford, and they basically said anything that's not hardware bound, they could theoretically change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that could be maybe tweaking the range of the Mach E and making it better. I, that's just an off the cuff thing. I'm not yep. saying that's happening, right. but you know, it, it could be literally just about anything that software could handle that is already electronically controlled that Ford could tweak. And with 33 million vehicles in the next six or seven years, that's, that's going to be a game changer, especially if, well, other automakers are going to have to keep up that, right. you know, we're going to have to see this from other companies. Otherwise Ford's going to kind of have that first mover advantage. So it, it's cool. Yeah. You know, I think when the current generation F-150 came out, mm -hmm. I, there was a little bit of criticism I know from people that said, well, it just looks, it looks very conservative. It looks, just looks like, very much the same. It, it looks like a dressed up version of, of the, of the previous generation F-150. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ford isn't taking a big enough risk going forward, but now as we're looking beneath the skin on the technology side, I see that I see the truck in a completely different way now with, with the capability that they're proposing. So, yeah, it'll be interesting going forward. I'm really keen to hear more about this from Ford. Um, I mean, they made the announcement. They shared a lot of information. There's, I think there's still a lot more to come. And, uh, and, and of course, we'll have the news as soon as it's, uh, as soon as it's available at motor1.com. Oh, definitely. 
Well, everyone, um, as always, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Whenever you happen to be listening to us, we always appreciate it. The uh, email is podcast at motorone.com. Mm -hmm. You can find us at uh, Motor One on YouTube and, of course, on just about any podcast um, service that you can name. We're there. Mm -hmm. and Spotify, so, yeah. Apple Spotify, Podcast. Apple Podcast. Ev everything i i i've seen the list and it is long it, it is it is very long and yeah. of course we the the new podcast drop every friday mm -hmm. we always announce them with an article on motorone.com that kind of mm -hmm. summarizes what you're going to hear check us out there email us yeah leave your comments i want to um, hear about your road trips what are you guys planning to do oh, now yeah. that the kind of covid is settling down and people are vaccinated where are you going tell us i want to know where, where are you going what are you driving what are you listening to what oh, yeah, are you totally. eating don't don't eat Taco Bell or Taco John's. You could be be more creative than the Chris's. We we can we can do better. We we deserve hey, it. If I'm in the right area, I love a Five Guys. If if uh, I'm in the right part of the country, I'll I'll take me some Five Guys. I, I've got a Five Guys here in Rapid. Ooh, very nice. Mine's so there there you go. Head several on miles out. away, <laughs> several towns away. So it, it's a rare treat for me. Head on out. Yeah. All righty. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Bye bye. We'll see ya.